Hello and welcome to everyone today. Our guest is well. Should we say new inked UFC fighter Jared Van Der? Jared, congrats on uh, inking UFC contract on uh, winning the White Contender Series. And uh, can you say a few words about yourself? Thank you for accepting the interview. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Uh, I'm sure it's late, uh, but I appreciate you having me. And uh, thanks to everyone watching or listening to this. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, when did you start training mixed martial arts? Uh, I jumped in right after the wrestling, uh, so that was about ten years ago. My first fight was actually October twenty third, twenty ten. So I've been fighting for about ten years. Uh, I have a really long amateur career, just because I needed to get experience fighting everybody, and so I took that long route, and then I jumped into the professional leagues, and now I'm here. Uh, so you were a wrestler before MMA, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, who are your coaches and sparring partners at the moment? Um, my coaches are Joe Daddy Stevenson, uh, Zach Sherman, who's my Muay Thai instructor and more or less my head coach. Um, my teammate uh, uh, Jamal Pope, maybe one of the best underutilized. Light heavyweights out there. Um, I have Sam Alvey, of course, Dominic Reyes, and you know the legend Dan Henderson popping in, beating me up every now and then. Yeah, outstanding. Uh, do you have a nickname? Yeah, no, and kind of. Uh, like some people call me the Mountain. Uh, depending on where you're at, I have plenty of different names. Uh, most, some of them are very inappropriate. Other ones are just jokes. Uh, when I was younger, a lot of people called me Drago because everyone saw Rocky a few times. They're like, "Oh, you're big and you look Russian." And <laughs> I'm just like, All right, whatever. Uh, so, are you going to have uh, the nickname in the UFC or? I'm I'm gonna let whatever anyone wants to call me. I, I'm not. I don't care. I get called enough names daily. What's another one? <clears throat> I, I I don't care. Uh, can you say something about your first amateur MMA fight? How did you feel heading into it? Uh, I was emotionally like a nerve wreck. My first fight, I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm doing this. But as I was walking out there, the my wrestling coach, who was like the hardest human being on me at the time, was my EMT, and he was like, you're going to go out there and you're going to kick ass. And the moment I saw him, I was like, oh, I won this fight. He, he, like seeing him he killed all my nerves mm, great uh, and your first professional fight it wasn't much different or uh, it was it was it was kind of a weird one because my first professional fight was the same place I had my first amateur fight and it's in the city I live in Hemet it's a very small town but it was King of the Cage uh, we have a lot of people uh, or like a, there's a lot of famous people that actually fought for Gladiator and King of Cage back in the day in that area but I went in that fight pretty calm, relaxed. I felt really good about myself. And I was able to secure the win in 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Outstanding, really. And in your second professional debut, it was your first... Uh, uh, who did you fight? Was it Dale and Murray, right? Your second. Uh, my second one was, I think... Um, I don't know. Because my opponent, I had, I forgot who my opponent was. They switched me up several times for uh, for my fight. Uh, I had I had one opponent like a week prior. They got me another opponent. He dropped out on weigh-ins, and they're like, "Yeah, just come to the venue, see what we could do." They got me another opponent literally that night. So, um, yeah, yeah, and uh, you won, right? What? Yeah, uh, you won, right? Yes, I won TKO, very similar fashion, uh, like I did my last fight. Uh, what can I say about your first professional loss? Was it ner nerve-wracking or? That that one, that one, uh, that was a hard one because uh, it was the first time I had like a high-level caliber guy. It was a guy named Richard Odoms. Uh, he was offered a UFC contract uh, beforehand, but I believe that because he's a police officer, prevented him from actually ever pursuing the UFC. That's from like what I 
gathered. And, you know, I I kind of allowed him to bait me late in the fifth round. I thought he wasn't going to pull off the standing Kimura. And when he did, I was just like, fuck. And that was a tough loss. And then I fought about a month or so after that against, a, like, a nobody. And that fight was a very pivotal fight for me because it mentally just clicked. It allowed me to, like, get back into that mind frame. I did very well. Uh, like, like, it helped me mentally get back in the game. And then I would go on two more fights. Uh, one was in South Africa. I lost to the champ, uh, which was a weird one for me because I watched the fight my opponent at the time, and everyone thought I won that fight. Like, a lot of people thought I was one-sided. And for me to get a split decision, just judges don't like me because the next fight, I go into another fight, I beat this guy all the time. Like, I felt like I beat him in the striking department. It just is one of those things where, again, the judges didn't like me. I fought their hometown hero in, you know, so they picked him, them over me. So it just it was a kind of a rough start there. But then I started, you know, training up wins, and you know now I'm here. Uh, who was your toughest opponent? Uh, I mean, before Dana White Contender Series, before thinking of UFC, uh, do you have a toughest uh, fight or toughest opponent? Oh, uh, I would say Andrew. Uh, the one that I went with decision with, I, it was the toughest because, I mean, we literally went 25 minutes punching each other. Give me one second. Okay. This guy's are loud. Excuse me, Dan. Sorry about that. It just got really hectic over there. Okay, okay, okay. I will cut. No problem. Enjoy. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, no, I'd say Andrew would be my hardest opponent because it, I tried everything to take the guy down or, like, take him out, but I couldn't. But, I mean, it was a fun fight, though, at the end of the day. I, like, it was the hardest fight, but it was also the most fun, joyous fight I had. Many people believe Tony Lopez is the best gatekeeper in the world. You fought him. What are your thoughts on fight against him? Oh, uh, when I took that fight... <laughs> I, I, I didn't do anything really special for that guy uh, because I sparred with him prior and when we were sparring I was just touching him up I'm like if I fight this guy for real I could really do some damage and then when we fought I was just I, I, I didn't do anything like I should have uh, prep wise I was, I, I was going through a rough time in my relationship I was going through a rough time with my management like life just took me so I go fight him and you know I spent I spent all three rounds just beating him up I mean I there was not one point where I worried that I was going to lose against him I just beat him up for three rounds what was your game plan for Dana White Contender Series to be honest uh, I watched your opponent prior to that and uh, I was thinking the fight will last at least two rounds, but uh, you finished him in round one and uh, let it go, great ground and pound. What was the game plan? Oh, okay, so with the change of opponent, uh, like I was, I was like when I was planning on fighting Oscar, I was planning on going like more of a chess match, like his boxing for Muay Thai type of thing. And every time I watched Oscar, I didn't see him blitz. Then they switched my opponent. I'm just like, oh, okay, this guy rushes. So. I was like, okay, let me try to gather myself. And he popped me a few times, but the initial clinch, I felt him. I'm like, oh, okay. We're we going, we going on the ground this round. So I was just, I knew he was going to get tired real soon too. I was like, I was like, okay, let him blitz me. Let me try to defend. You know, I did take a few shots, but I was like, he's going to get tired. He's going to get tired. The moment he drops his hands, I was like, oh, okay. Now it's time to start throwing things together, start getting thinking about the striking. Then when he went to blitz again, I was able to change levels, uh, take his back, get him to the fence, and I knew once we hit the ground, I, he was going to lose. So basically your game plan was to take him to the ground, right? Uh, once I felt him on the cage, yeah. 
All right, uh, you're set to square off against Serhi Spivak. Well, Serhi Spivak had ups and downs. I mean, according to my thoughts, he is very beatable guy. But uh, what do you think about it? I think he's a beatable guy too. I, I don't think he's going to be some chump. I mean, he's in the UFC. I just called him out because I wanted to fight him when I was offered to fight him back in the day. I don't know what if it was him, his corners, or his coaches, managers, or whoever. They didn't want him to fight me. And then I was like, well, I want to fight him. And now that we're in the UFC, he really, really doesn't seem to. He's not running, so I assume it was maybe his managers or his coaches trying to get him into the UFC. And I'm not begrudging of that. You know, help your boy get to the highest paid part of the sport, make some money. And I, li I like him stylistically. I think, you know, this is going to be a fun fight for both him and I. And, yeah, no, I think he has some things that – and he's also the first person that's actually taken Sambo that I have fought. So I'm going to be very intrigued because I love actually Sambo. I remember watching, like, Sambo videos to compensate for my lack of jiu-jitsu in my early MMA career. So I'm excited for this fight. Do you think that you have uh, a lot of advantages over Sergei? I have a longer reach than him. We're about the same height. Uh, we have roughly about the same amount of experience. So, I mean, there's really not too many advantages. I think he has longer legs than me. I have short legs. So, there are certain pluses and minuses to both. Like, his longer legs means his teeth game could be a lot harder to fight through. His kicks a lot harder. For me to defend like if i kick they're gonna land harder there's a lot of things like that like i mean there's always a plus and minus as to what we have and i believe sergey and i were gonna have the, some complimentary style matches yeah it's gonna be a fun fight for sure uh would you like uh, to greet someone maybe to say something we didn't speak about in this uh, interview I'm, I'm sorry. Everything's going crazy on my phone right now. I'm sorry about that. Um, not really. I just, you know, I've, I'm curious. How late is it, wherever you are? Yeah. Like, what time zone are you in? Uh, right now it's 9.19 uh, p.m. Okay, it's not that bad. I thought it was going to be later. I was like, for some reason I thought you were going to be really late. I was really late once when I was interviewing Martin Day on Hawaii, you know, and he said 3.30 uh, p.m. And I was like, all right, Hawaii is like Pacific time. When I saw what, which was Hawaii, I was like... No, no, like, I think Hawaii is like five hours uh, behind us. So, yeah. Twelve hours differential, middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I need my coffee. Yeah, it was a terrible experience for me anyway, because I didn't know, I told him all right, I was thinking it's Pacific time, all right, I'm going to sleep around 12, it's normal. And I said, oh no, please don't. <laughs> but all right, I got up, no problem. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, yeah that's, that's all I got for right now. Uh, you have any other questions? Well, I also have another question. What do you think when you're coached by very, very big people like uh, your coaches? Will it bring critical, critical advantage in the most critical moment of the fight? Yes or no? If yes, why? If no, why? Uh, I think they're very critical. I, mean, I have one coach that's uh, like my, my teammate Jamal. I have him cornering. Me and him have fought. So he knows how I think in a fight. Yeah, we fought not once, but twice on the amateur circuit. But he knows how I think, and he's a good training partner. But he's also, he's one, he's, he's actually roughly the same age as Sergey, but the dude, an intelligent person. Uh, he's always learning, he's constantly improving, he's always forcing me to get better. My other coach, Zach, he's also very intelligent people. I like to surround myself with guys that are really smart, that take the fight game to a whole different level. And so... They know that I could change up my style in the middle of a fight. Hell, they know I could do it in the middle of a round. They're like, hey, you need to go from striking to grappling, grappling to 
more of a ground and pound, old school MMA style to back up being a boxer over a kickboxer. They're really good at telling me how to switch that style up in the middle or during uh, in between rounds. Yeah, excellent. Can't wait for the fight against Sergei Spivak. So, thank you so much for this. I have to edit video. I hope it will be online uh, tomorrow, your morning time. Okay, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I know it's late there. Not as late as 3 a.m., but I do appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. All right, I will send you video when it's online. All right, thank you. All right, goodbye, Jared.